Okay, so good afternoon everyone. My name is Rebecca Nickel. I'm an application scientist at Biolegend. And today I'm going to be speaking about um, some of our new fluorescent dyes for multicolor flow cytometry analysis. Um, so current day research is largely focused on um, high parameter and multi-dimensional cell analysis so that we can start identifying some rare cell subsets as well as uh, generating large omics um, data, subset, data sets. Um, this wave of focus towards generating these large data sets um, has largely been um, in a response to uh, rapid advancements in instrument technology and bioinformatic analysis tools, uh, such as some of the spectral flow cytometers are coming out that are coming out, um, and some of the single cell work that's being done as well. So in addition to these instruments with cutting edge technology becoming more widely available at institutes um, and organizations, uh, they can be housed at these core facilities, um, and that makes it a lot easier for multiple labs to be using um, these great, expensive, wonderful instruments um, and gives more, ac more accessibility to um, more labs. In parallel with advancing the instrument technology, there's a growing need for more reagents that can um, be compatible with these more advanced instruments so that we can fully maximize their capabilities to address new research questions. So given this research trend, we at Biolegend are striving to provide solutions for researchers by asking how can we support the researchers to maximize capabilities of advancing technology to enable future scientific discoveries. One of the ways in which we are doing so is through development of new fluorescent dyes um, that maximize the potential of what you can do with some of these new spectral cytometers. So some of the advances in the flow cytometer capabilities that are brought on by spectral flow cytometers and new laser lines have created a demand for new floor floors to expand the capacity of these multicolor flow cytometry panels that can give you a deeper analysis into these unique cell subsets. Some of the criteria that we use um, when looking at developing new dyes include having um, these dyes to have new spectral properties that are very distinguished and different from what is already ex um, accessible in the landscape. We also want to improve upon previously existing and widely used dyes, um, and I'll show that a little bit later on in which some of our new dyes exhibit better stability, better brightness, and new spectra that is able to be distinguished from popular dyes such as PE. Uh, to this end, we're excited to introduce our exclusive series of newly developed dyes, including the Spark and Fire Tandem dyes. Um, starting with the Spark dyes, they're composed of small organic fluorophores, and they possess a relatively narrow excitation and emission spectra, um, and this allows them to fit into previously unoccupied channels within uh, some of these spectral cytometer layouts. Uh, the fire dyes are paired with FICO protein based donor dyes, such as PE or APC, um, which allow us to finely tune the emission characteristics of the fluorophores by changing the Stokes shift. Uh, due to their tandem dye composition, it allows for generating unique spectral signatures, um, <clears throat> which can be identified as a unique, unique fluor through spectral unmixing on um, on these spectral cytometers such as the ID7000 and the Aurora. So here's a quick list of some of our new Spark and Fire tandem dyes. Uh, we now have dyes with different optimal excitation wavelengths that are different from what is available on the current like, landscape. So these range from Violet Excited Spark Violet 423, which is very new on the market, to our Blue Excited Spark Blue 550, and then as well as our green excited Spark YGs, as well as our PE fire tandems. And then lastly, we have our red excited Spark and IR 685 and our APC fire tandems. Among these, APC, APC fire 750 was released back in 2016 as a more stable alternative to APC Psi 7. Um, it is now a mainstay in many flow cytometry panels used, used worldwide. Um, the rest have gradually been released over the past two years, um, and they have been doing very well. I personally have used them in a lot of panels, and they've been working great. Um, we're currently striving to develop additional spark and fire tandem dyes that can further expand our multicolor capabilities. 
um, and those should be coming out soon in the next year or so. To start off at first, we want to talk about some of these APC Fire 810 and, P and the newly released PE Fire 810. The development of these dyes was inspired by the advances in photon detectors equipped on new cytometers that increase the sensitivity in wavelengths greater than 800 nanometers. Uh, the APC Fire 810 has a larger stoke shift that, compared to the traditionally used far red emitting dyes such as APC Psi 7 and APC Fire 750, shown here in this, um, in this histogram plot. Uh, on a spectral flow cytometer in, uh, equipped with the blue, YG, and red lasers, PE Fire 810 and APC Fire 810 can be easily distinguished between PE Psi 7 and APC Psi 7 respectively. Um, and also they can be distinguished from other equivalent dyes within those ranges. Uh, due to their very unique emission properties in a previously un um, unoccupied space, the dyes have minimal spreading with those dyes that are in those ranges, um, in those similar ranges. Uh, so they make these, these dyes an ideal option as a plug-in marker that can be plugged into large panels that may have maybe full of everything else in that area, but now we're taking a previously unoccupied space and giving you that new dye to look at. A couple of our more recent additions uh, include the Spark YG 581 and Spark YG 593. Um, in particular, these two dyes take advantage of the wider availability of the spectral instruments equipped with both the YG and the blue lasers. So as we can see from the spectra here in the very top, PE has a primary emission peak in the, at the 581 range. So Spark YG 581 has an almost identical emission peak, but because of the, um, how they're doing the unmixing, with the blue laser, you can see PE still has a major peak in, in the blue range, but Spark YGs do not have that major peak in the blue range, so it allows them to be unmixed much easier um, and allows them to have them, and allows you to have them in panels together. With this in mind, we do want to caution users that if your instrument does not have a blue and a YG laser on the instrument, then it may not be a good idea to run those together because then you would not be able to distinguish between a PE and a Spark YG 581. But if you do have those two, then they are able to be unmixed. And we show that here in these plots um, where we're looking at Spark YG 593 versus Spark YG 581 in the first upper left plot. And you can see there is some spreading happening there, but the populations are able to be resolved. Uh, similarly, we're also looking at PE versus Spark YG 581, uh, Spark YG 593 versus Spark YG 581, and then the Alexa 647 versus Spark YG 581. Um, and in those plots, very similar. You have some spreading that is happening, but it is much less than, um, or you are still able to resolve those populations. In addition to our Spark and Fire Tandem dyes, uh, one of our more recent additions is Caravia Blue 520. Um, it was developed and validated in partnership with Sony Biotechnology and is composed of a unique fluorophore multimer backbone for enhanced brightness. So Caravia Blue 520 is actually brighter than FITC and Alexa Fluor 488. So this allows you to better identify dim expressing markers such as CD197, and CCR7. Here we have CD197 shown in the leftmost plot. Um, and you can also look at rare cell markers as well. Uh, we've demonstrated that Caravia Blue 520 conjugates are not only useful for staining surface cell markers, but they're also useful for staining intracellular markers, such as interferon gamma, which would be a cytoplasmic protein for intracellular staining, and TBET, which would be a intranuclear protein, um, as shown here on the right. To show you an example of how some of these dyes can be used together in a panel, we put together the following data. Uh, this, so this is the makeup of a 25 color panel that we ran on Sony's new ID7000 spectral cytometer. And as you can see, we used a lot of the new Spark um, PE Fire Tandem dyes, or as well as some APC Fire Tandem dyes, and the Caravia Blue 520. 
And for time, I'm just going to show you a few of these plots, but if you're interested in seeing more of the data, please contact either myself or one of my colleagues, and we will be happy to share this data with you. Um, so just to go over a couple of them, we're looking at, uh, in this second plot from the left on the upper area, cannot do a pointer there, but <laughs> uh, we have CD127 KB520 versus CD25 PE, and we can see really good resolution of that T-Reg population there. In the next plot over, we're looking at CD45 RO PE Fire 640 versus CD45 RA PE Fire 700. And you can see very nice separation of the naive and memory T cell populations. Now, if we jump down to the bottom, second from the right plot, uh, we're looking at CD14 Spark Blue 550 versus CD16 PE Psi 7. And you can see you get very good separation of your monocyte populations, including your classical monocytes, non-classical monocytes, and intermediate monocytes. And lastly, in the very bottom right plot, we're looking at CD11B Spark YG593 versus CD16 PE Psi 7. And you can see we get a nice separation of the neutrophilic granulocytes. In summary, we at Biologen are continuing to make rapid advancements in flow cytometry reagents that is following along with the instrument technology um, advancements that are happening very quickly. Uh, our Spark Fire Tandem and Caravia dyes that we have developed are current and are currently developing maximize your capabilities for um, doing in-depth cell phenotyping analyses. Um, and this presentation is pretty much a broad introduction to our dyes, but please reach out to us for more information and technical help. Uh, you can contact us at tech at biolegend.com.